All right, so we've talked about circuit theory and Wheatstone bridges and strain gauges, but eventually you actually have to build this uh, stinking thing. So this is uh, some tips about how to build uh, a strain gauge circuit. So uh, we know small changes in the resistance of strain gauge can be measured uh, with a Wheatstone bridge. And so in the case of the kind of circuits we're gonna build, this R1, is not going to be a resistor in the sort of standard sense. It's going to be that uh, strain gauge itself. And it's going to be this resistor is going to be attached to the beam that's going to be vibrating. Now, um, one of the things you'll notice in the circuit we're going to use is it's going to look kind of like this down here. And I want to talk just a little bit about what this potentiometer, that pot, uh, or this potentiometer, these are essentially uh, similar circuits that do the same thing, what that's doing. Well, you can see if I change the, if you think about these um, resistors being in parallel, if I change this contact point down here and essentially make the resistance of this uh, potentiometer zero, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to short circuit R3. All of my current is going to go through here and R3, if we think of R3 as everything over here, will essentially be zero, okay? If I, on the other hand, move my potentiometer way over here, and let's say this is a really big potentiometer, then that's gonna stop any current coming through here, and that's gonna make the arm, this, this whole arm, have a resistance of whatever the nominal resistance of R3 is, okay? So this potentiometer allows me to to change the resistance of this arm in order to balance my Wheatstone bridge as a whole, okay? And that's what I want to do at the start of my circuit. I'm not going to be changing that resistance as we go through, but we want to start off with a balanced bridge um, when, we're, uh, when we're trying to use that R1 as our sensor. This is going to do a very similar thing, and so you'll see this potentiometer on our circuit diagram uh, and it basically allows us to balance the bridge uh, by changing, we can leak, essentially leak a little bit of current out through here uh, in order to make sure that this voltage matches the voltage up there. Okay, so a little complication to a Wheatstone bridge uh, that makes it a little more flexible. Uh, and then that R1 is going to be our sensitive resistor and we can use that to figure out um, uh, if we can measure the resistance R1, then we can use our sensitivity to measure our strain. Now, one of the things uh, that we need to know is the sensitivity of our resistor. And we call that, uh, with a strange gauge, it's called a gauge factor. And so you can see here, this looks like a sensitivity. The change in the resistance uh, over our strain. Okay, so given amount of this, we can think of this as a change in strain too, because the strain, uh, the initial strain is gonna be zero, right, when we're at equilibrium. And so we have a sort of uh, change in resistance over the change in strain uh, that gives us our gauge factor uh, and tells us how we're gonna read those voltages, right? If our voltage changes um, by a certain amount, we need to know how to translate that into a strain reading uh, and that's what gauge factor does. Gauge factor is controlled by uh, the manufacturer. It's part of what goes into the manufacturing process of a, of a strain gauge. You define that, what you, the gauge factor do you want that to be. And here you can see a nice image of what that R1 becomes, right? This is the wing of the Wheatstone bridge that will actually be attached to our beam. Now let's look at the, the more complex circuit. And this, this is what we're building over here. And that might look sort of overwhelming at first, but all it is is a Wheatstone bridge um, over here attached to uh, what's called an instrumentation amplifier, okay? And the reason we want an amplifier here is to amplify our signal, okay? The, the, the change in resistance of R1 is going to be small enough um, that 
reading the difference between the voltage here and the voltage here, uh, we're going to get really small changes in voltage, but that instrument amplifier is going to amplify those changes and give us a, an easier to read um, uh, output of what's happening with our beam. Okay, so let's look a little bit at um, what this guy is doing. This is our amplifier. Each of the eight legs has a given purpose. Okay, this is our ground our low negative, that's voltage source. This is our positive voltage source. So look over here and you can see here's our battery. That red wire, everything attached by a wire is the same voltage. So if our battery is 10 volts, this is 10 volts all along here. That goes into leg seven. Uh, zero volts, the ground, goes into leg four. Okay, and over here. That's our negative voltage. This is our positive voltage. These guys, uh, we're just going to hook up a resistor across the two of them. So here's one and eight. We're using a 220 ohm resistor. Uh, and that resistor defines how much we're amplifying. In other words, uh, it defines what's called the gain. Uh, how much are we multiplying the input voltage uh, and to turn that into an output voltage. Our input is two and three, and so those two and three are coming from the two different sides of our Wheatstone bridge. Uh, and you can think of that, this is a little confusing because it's a three uh, wire strain gauge, and that's used uh, to get rid of some potential errors created by the length of our wires. Uh, but the black and the white here are gonna be the same voltage. We can think of those as the top of our bridge. So one of those goes into two, uh, and the other side of the bridge, the green wire, goes into three. So that's the difference in voltage between the top of the bridge here and the bottom of the bridge here. And that gets uh, multiplied by the gain to give us our output. Okay, and output six then goes to our multimeter or whatever it is we're using uh, to measure the voltage. So we have a couple of different purposes here. One, this power, four and seven, power our amplifier. One and eight tell us how much we're gonna amplify. Two and three is where we input the, the voltage difference that we wanna multiply. And six is where we get the outputted um, amplified voltage that we're gonna actually use when we take our data. So that's our whole circuit here is two things, a Wheatstone bridge that produces a voltage difference and an amplifier that amplifies that voltage difference.